The bolt and pole turret is power operated by an electric hydraulic system providing the air gunner with constant power for training and operating the guns under all conditions. Unlike the Fraser Nash turret, most of the bolt and pole types cannot be armed when the aircraft is airborne. The arming is carried out on the ground by the armament staff. The purpose of this arming strap, which is being flaked into the ammunition box, is to provide a connection between one box and the other, so that as soon as this box is empty, the ammunition from the second box can be drawn up and refed to the guns. Care must be taken to flake the strap correctly so as to avoid stoppages when loading subsequent boxes. The ammunition must also be correctly flaked in order that the full quantity can be loaded into the box. The top end of the ammunition belt is then led through the rollers and the lid replaced. There are four boxes of ammunition, one for each gun. Loading the guns is done preferably by two men one to fit the boxes and one to draw up the arming strap. Access to the hatch is obtained by the access hatch on the underside of the fuselage. Three boxes have already been fitted and we will now follow the operation of fitting the fourth box which is precisely the same as the other three. The top of the ammunition belt is attached to the arming strap, which is already in position from the gun. As the ammunition box is raised into position, the second armourer draws the arming strap out from the ammunition chute. The ammunition box is then locked into position in the turret. The four boxes feed the four guns in this order. Bottom right box feeds top right gun. Top right box feeds bottom right gun. Top left box feeds bottom left gun. Bottom left box feeds top left gun. This is the band from the bottom right box which feeds the top right gun. And this is the band from the top right box which feeds the bottom right gun. These bags are fitted to collect the spent cartridge cases and links, each bag holding returns from two guns. The bags are attached to the turret by a spring plunger at the top and by leather straps and two turn buttons at the bottom. The second armourer then proceeds to draw up the ammunition belt by means of the arming strap, detaching the ammunition belt from the arming strap and fitting the first round over the retaining pole. During this operation the belt must be firmly held or it will slip back down the chute and much time lost in threading through the new arming strap. The transporter is then put down and the breech cover closed. The armourer making sure that it is securely locked. The arming door is then closed and locked. The armourers having done their job, we will now follow the routine and procedure of an operational air gunner in a defiant aircraft. The gunner stows his parachute on the right hand side of the turret, although the latest instructions are for the parachute to be clipped onto one's harness. The correct method of entry into the turret is by grasping the vertical stay tubes. When the gunner seats himself, he makes sure that his feet are on the footrest. The turret doors are closed by operating ratchets on either side. Success with your firing in a two-seater aircraft 
depends entirely upon the teamwork of gunner and pilot, and the strictest attention to every detail is vital. The experienced air gunner follows the routine as a matter of habit. Observe his actions. He plugs in intercom, ensures that free and engaged lever is in the engaged position. The sight switch is switched on and reflector sight tested. Firing switch is turned over to gunner and he proceeds to cock his four guns. You will observe that this experienced gunner's movements are deliberate and unhurried. Each gun is cocked once. He depresses the firing button on the control column and proceeds to cock his guns once more. After each gun is cocked, the fire and safe is put to fire and the guns are ready. Cocking toggle is replaced in stowage and the retracting fairings lever is turned to the left and the main switch turned on. The turret is then rotated to the stowed forward position ready to take off. At the end of each flight, the air gunner rotates his turret to the aft position which enables him to vacate the turret on landing. The turret can be rotated by hand, but the wise gunner rotates by power before engine is switched off by pilot. Before leaving the turret, all switches are switched off, fire and safe put to safe, Intercom disconnected. Pilot and gunner leave the aircraft for the ground staff to refuel and rearm in readiness for the next operation. All this seems very simple and straightforward. So it is when you know how. Let us therefore take the whole routine and procedure stage by stage so that we can drill it into our minds and thus gain efficiency. Follow every action and movement of this airman and try to remember them in their proper order. Arriving at the aircraft, the airman pulls down the step on the wing and the foot rest from the side of the fuselage. Climbs onto the wing and places parachute in the stowage provided. As you may know, the position of an airman in his turret is not the most comfortable. It certainly is not an armchair seat, but he can adjust the seat for height so that every control is within easy reach. The height of the seat in relation to the reflector sight is important and it should be adjusted so that one's cheek finds itself resting against the pad by just bending the body forward. The airman then climbs into the turret, grasping the vertical stay tubes to assist himself in. He places his feet on the footrests and closes the turret doors by operating the ratchet handles. Now this is the view of the panel from the airman's eye line. Its apparent complexity is simplified by a close-up description of each component 
and the part it plays in the routine before the airman reports, Guns OK. He first plugs in the intercom. Then connects up the oxygen supply by plugging the oxygen plug into the bayonet socket on the left hand side of the instrument panel and tests the flow by operating the regulator valve. In order to save oxygen, it should be turned off after testing. He makes sure that the free and engaged lever is in the engaged position. He checks his cocking toggle to see that it is there and replaces it in its holder. The spare bulbs for the reflector site are examined and replaced in their sockets. He checks the radius of the cheek pad for free movement, switches on and tests reflector sight. He moves the firing switch to gunner. All four guns are then cocked once, although on the screen we are showing one gun only are being cocked. And on depressing the firing button, the four guns are cocked again. And the fire and safe units put to fire. The guns are now ready. He next moves the fairings contraction lever aside and switches on the motor switch. By grasping the control column and armature switch lever, he is able to move the control column in all directions. The airman is thus assured that the turret is indeed rotating. Turret movements are tested under power. The airman also tests the high-speed movement by depressing this high-speed button whilst the turret is on the move. This high-speed movement is only intended for a quick change over from one direction to another. It does not improve the motor and should not be maintained for long periods. He makes sure that the hand rotation handle is available should power fail and returns the handle to its proper stowage. He then power operates the turret into the forward stowed position, secures his safety strap, and reports readiness to the pilot. At the end of the flight, the following procedure is carried out. The airman switches off the motor switch operates fairings control lever, puts fire and safe units to safe, switches off a firing switch, reflector sight switch, sight master switch, disconnects intercom, disconnects oxygen supply, Unfastens safety belt, opens doors by pushing release handle forward and vacates turret, taking parachute with him. Practice makes perfect and the gunner you have just seen is proficient. 
Let us now take you in a Bolton Paul turret for the first time. Discover how much you have learned and how much forgotten of Bolton Paul drill. Not a good start off. He is trying to get in the turret the wrong way by grasping the doors. You will find it much easier by taking a grip on the vertical stay tubes. Now don't forget to place your feet on the foot rests or you may get them badly injured when you start to rotate the turret. One thing no gunner ever forgets is to close his turret doors. For one thing, it becomes very drafty if you don't. And very few gunners ever forget to plug in their intercom. Our gunner also remembers to connect up the oxygen supply and then turns his attention to the free and engaged lever which is now in the engaged position. But you cannot check your sight until you have switched on your master sight switch. Now he can check his sight. Which, satisfactory, he turns the firing switch to gunner. The word gunner reminds him that this is the time to cock guns. Each gun is cocked once. After the first cocking, the firing button on the control column is depressed. So far, so good. After all four guns have been cocked, the guns are cocked again. And fire and safe units of each gun put to fire. And I'm glad to observe that the cocking toggle is returned to its holder. But you can't power operate before switching on the motor switch. No, no, wait a moment. Too late. He's blown it. You see, he had forgotten to release the armoured switch on the control column before switching the motor switch on. And he has blown the fuse, as you saw. Incidentally, the gunner should always make sure that he has got spare fuses available. This matter rectified, the gunner can now operate the turret, which he proceeds to do, stowing guns in forward position, ready for the take off. Safety strap secured. He reports guns OK to the pilot and all is ready for the takeoff of his first training flight. On the return of the aircraft, the drill routine is switch off the motor switch. Operate free and engaged lever. Put fire and safe units to safe. Switch off firing switch. Reflector sight. Sight master switch. Disconnect oxygen supply and intercom. Unfasten safety strap. Open doors. 
by pushing release handle forward and vacate turret. Remember the sequence of the drill you have seen before and after a flight, because by doing each thing in the correct order, you will avoid making mistakes which may have quite serious consequences. Mastery of drill will make you more than just efficient. It will give you a greater degree of confidence in your guns and in yourself. come home. Our fighters land after a brisk but successful encounter with hit-and-run raiders. Here's a typical scene at one of our fighter bases between battles. These are some of the boys who've already blunted Hitler's air offensive. In due course, they'll stop it altogether. They take it easy between raids, and there's always plenty of sport to be had when there's no serious work to be done in the sky. When the alarm does come, not a second is lost. Blue section out there. While the public takes shelter, our fighter pilots take off to destroy the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> 